And good morning on Thursday, April 26th. Thanks for joining us on the 359 Podcast for episode 393. The recording will start soon, but first we want to give a quick shout out to Retroard von Dornberg, who submitted today's backing track. It's called Stay A While. You can find his music at thecaravel.net slash saw. We'll put a link to it in the show notes afterwards. A big shout out to Retroard for submitting a soundtrack to the 359 podcast. A first oh, for the awesome. show. Wait, yeah, this is fantastic. like an original song? Yeah, this is an original song oh. by a fan. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, really Thank cool. you so much. Thank you, yeah. Really appreciate fantastic. it. Fantastic. So Ben, Roger, Alfred, we have a stacked show as always. Yeah, so we'll be talking about uh, Snap Spectacles. Inexplicably, Whoa. they're still here. Everyone is so excited about I this. I know, I know. I think we're <laughs> mostly just going to crap on it. In other news, <laughs> Dial-Up is back. Right. Oh, so, <laughs> wow. Um, getting those hits in early. So we're going to be talking about Facebook's earnings as well as the continued controversy over Cambridge Analytica. Uh, and lastly, Ben's going to be talking about uh, the final story in our funny, Follow the Money package, uh, Look at the Death of Cash. So, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Brian will pick out the best, and we'll get to them in 3 minutes and 59 seconds. In 3, 2... Welcome to the 359. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. Snap spectacles are inexplicably back. Snap announced a second version with faster uploads, water resistance, uh, and better audio quality for video, and also t- touts a smaller profile. But I have to ask, why? Why? Because Alfred? they're a camera company. <laughs> That's what they make. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't Snap want to But these are glasses, not cameras. They have the, cameras on them. The camera built in. They also of. take photos now, which I'm so confused. They couldn't take photos before? Yeah, no, it was really just video. It was, it was only video before, yeah. and you had to hold it down, and you couldn't like change the amount of time that it recorded for or anything like that. Um, the, the first spectacles were very bad. Um, I actually own a pair. Uh, and did you actually use the, them? Yes, I used them for like... Two weeks. All right. So there you go. <laughs> totally worth it. How much were they again? Like they were like 130. 130. They're 150 now. Okay. Like these new ones because they're water resistant and mm. you can take them to the beach. I mean, you I guess get a I pair. kind of like the water resistance idea, but I mean, I don't know. There's just. I'm, I, I would have to see how it affects my phone's battery life because that was like the biggest reason why I stopped using it. It was like killing oh. my phone battery oh, life. Really? Yeah. All oh. right. So next up. Facebook is facing its biggest crisis ever, but you couldn't really tell from their their recent quarterly earnings. Revenue was up fifty percent, uh, and profits were up as the quarter. The company just got better at using data to create targeted ads. So, I guess I mean the it's scandal proof essentially. Uh, maybe it's still Cambridge Analytica is still a fairly new phenomenon for the company. So maybe it didn't right. hit this particular quarter. Um, the social network had two point two billion monthly active monthly users in the quarter, which is up 13% from the year before. Right. That's the number to really pay attention to, to see if people are migrating away from well, Facebook. Really, that I mean, hasn't think, happened yet. You think we'll see a drop off in, in the next quarter report? That would probably be more likely if there is a drop off at all. Right. I, I would argue that there probably won't be. Yeah. With all that, all the talk about, uh, you know, hashtag delete Facebook, people really haven't jumped on board of actually getting rid of those accounts. Yeah, Zuckerberg even noted that it wasn't like a major impact to like how many people are using Facebook. Right. Yeah, it's also a huge, huge pool of users. Absolutely. So how many people would have to delete Facebook to try to not just sl- stop the growth from happening, but actually get the number to go down? Yeah. I don't know. It would be tough. Well, look, the controversy isn't over. Zuckerberg is maybe heading to the European Parliament for another round of grilling. Uh, and the UK today called it a morality-free zone. So, Ouch. Yeah. Uh, lastly, Ben, uh, you've got the final story in the funny follow the money package. I did it. The death of cash. Tell us about it. Is it dead? Can I stop using my cash? Should I just give it away. Just I mean, give it like, to me. How much do you use cash now, though? That's the thing. I'm actually I I've not completely stopped using cash, but I tend to not have cash in my wallet. Right. Most people tend to have, I would say, like an emergency twenty or fifty yeah. dollars in their wallet. Well, fifty. They're, Dang. Roughly. High roller. There are only about 5% of Americans that don't have any cash at all in their wallet. So if you're one of those people, then you're a very small minority. I mean, I, I it varies, but sometimes that. I'll go like a week or two without any cash in my wallet. And like I will actively choose places where 
they take credit cards or debit cards. Yeah, right. I try to live cashless, um, but I can't do it in my own neighborhood. Like if it were around this office, I'd be able You'd to be do fine. it. Yeah, but like sure. in my neighborhood, it's like they're all very old school there. And it's like most of them are like cash only there. Right. Yeah. And that's a major hurdle to actually doing cashless. A lot of the boosters that argue for cashless say that it's more secure. There's less fraud. You're less likely to, you know, lose your money if it just, you know, kind of somebody takes 20 bucks off of you. You don't know where it went. So oh, the flip side is hackers are... Yeah, you can't hack my wallet, baby. Yeah, they can. They can hack your wallet. Yeah, especially a Bitcoin wallet. That's definitely true. So, all right, that's all the time we've got for, for more of these stories. Check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. Thanks for listening. And thanks for joining along for the recording of the regular audio podcast. that is now being uh, scat soloed by Ben Fox Rubin. Uh, go a ahead little, and submit. A little assist by Alfred there. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, you guys sound exactly the same. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the chat and uh, start taking out some questions and comments so we can keep the conversation going right out the gate. From DC147, it is Thursday, my dude. Uh, can I put... Can I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I pay with my face using Snapchat spectacles by just headbutting the contactless terminal? Alfred? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the new time. feature. That's for, actually uh, why money is dead now. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. And, if the, and also your brain cells as you, like, <laughs> smash your head into it. If the it, it only works if the spectacles break, though. So you have to break the spectacles <laughs> and then buy a new pair for every single that's transaction. That's a brilliant business model right, right. there. Challenge Real business. business model. Yeah. Way to go, Snapchat. Um. Look, I'm I'm just really confused by the whole spectacles thing because it had to book a forty million dollar loss in November because it had so many unsold spectacles. So they're doubling down on the strategy. Yeah, Does that so make some sense? of some of the these new spectacles were made with the parts of the unknown ones. I mean, unsold ones. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Ouch. Yeah. So you know, so they, they were cycling their own stock <laughs> back from the dead. Franken glasses. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Like, uh, it's clear that they want like their hardware to be like a major selling point for them. Right. Um, they I, are I look, trying very hard say, to make it yeah, cool. I, I get that they're trying to they're trying to be a camera company. They're trying to be, they're trying to have hardware. They're trying to be cool, but like. I don't know. It hasn't really caught on. Like I still see, actually, I see fewer of them now. But those the the snap whatever yellow uh, vending machines, right? Maybe the reason why they're like going so gung ho about this is is like try to copy that Facebook and Instagram. Like <laughs> can't copy well, a pair of sunglasses. Thing, Facebook could do it. I mean, they have the money to copy it. I mean, it'd be a failing business. But yeah, but why bother? They can just be a fast follower to Snapchat's successful businesses right. as opposed to catching up on maybe, stuff that doesn't really maybe work. It's maybe like Snap a, is just like the incubator for all the future business models that Facebook Maybe it's like a honey pot. Exactly right. Maybe it's a honey pot and they want Facebook to copy it. So, that, like, <laughs> so it like, just lose. destroys their business. <laughs> ha ha, guys. You have way more to lose than we do. So looking at this, I, I, I want to ask a broader question. This was back more than a year ago. Uh, Snapchat's or Snap Incorporated stock was at around $27. Now it's below uh, 15 Yeah. What could help this company? Like, I, I feel like after they IPO'd, Every, like the the polish came off well, of the, the company. Is, people is that, aren't like, as excited about it. A lot of people actually do use it. Like everyone yeah. like goes off about you know oh Instagram story is like the thing that everybody uses. But like that's the thing that like influencers and like you know media companies are using. Like, but part of the problem there is investors aren't necessarily looking at that. They're looking at yeah like, daily active users, monthly active users, and those numbers have not been that great. Mm -hmm. And the whole. This whole we're gonna do a whole reboot thing. The reboot thing didn't really work out so well. Mm -hmm. I think there's there's just a lot of questions about the direction. Of yeah, Snapchat. I would mm -hmm. say that the only place where Snapchat really wins on is like demographic. Yes, like they they actually have like a lot of young users as mm -hmm. opposed to like Instagram Stories is, is, is like very popular right now, and I've like even started using that instead of like Snapchat just because. I mean, I more, use I, I definitely use Instagram Stories. Over it's Snapchat. just yeah, it's more convenient, but yeah. it's one of those things where. Um, I don't know. I feel like it'll end up like Facebook, where it's like just old people on it. Maybe Instagram is already where old people are. Yeah, they're yeah. like the cool old people. Maybe I don't know. I like to think I'm a cool old person. That's me, right? Yeah. Sure. Cool. No. I'm okay. Cashless. Fine. Whatever. More questions from Serenjoy. Why can't Snap make the spectacles look a little more subtle? They look so cartoonish. I agree with them. Yeah, Bridget had a Bridget had a great tweet on it where like so the little glass like cameras on yeah. the sides yeah. they yeah. look like like their eyeballs and they're like looking on the side like cross-eyed like that wait it's so are there two cameras on that thing? yes mm -hmm. why, yeah. why two why not just one i don't know from both sides or something all right yeah ask evan 
Um, yeah, so they look like eyeballs on the side. I guess for symmetry purposes. Oh, that's the new ones? Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I guess they're okay. I, I am disappointed, though, that the new one wasn't just like a monocle. <laughs> like snap monocles, yo. Like That yeah, would that be would, seriously hipster right there. I would wear that. I know, because you're a hipster. So to to Stringjoy's question though, I think they very intentionally made the design look like this because they don't want to make them look like regular glasses. Well, yeah. also they, this is a marketing ploy. They want people to recognize them as Snapchat. Well, spectacles. beyond beyond that, I mean, it, there are physical limitations to putting a camera into glasses. Mm -hmm. You can't make them look like regular slimmer profile glasses because you still have the hardware required that and i i think they wanted the cameras to be obvious yeah because, for privacy like, yeah like yeah, yeah. when like google glass point. had theirs yeah. and it was just like it all freaked these people issues. out yeah for yeah. sure that's exactly what dc uh 147 is saying in the chat right now you don't want to have the hidden glasses yeah. you're gonna get called out yeah no that's true creep that's a great point <laughs> it's definitely a creep move so let's talk about some alternatives for Snapchat, and if they really do want to embrace being a camera company. Uh, Josh Boyd says, if Snap made a cheap GoPro-like camera, I would buy that. Where would we like to see a Snap camera implemented besides stupid-looking glasses? A friend of mine actually used the glasses as, like, a GoPro-like camera. Like, he would just put it on, like, the dashboard of his car or something like that and press it if he wanted to. But it's but locked into doing a Snap story. Yeah. So it's short, and, also, and it's yeah, crappy. The, your video is short, though. Well, yeah, I think that's how, like, yeah. it manages to, like, last throughout the whole day. Like, it's not recording recording video like constantly because I mean, think about like battery life on the camera on the glasses itself it's not that great or yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well look I'm, I'm, like, I'm, it would function more like a real camera uh but like you you're not able to upload like long extended footage on yeah. snapchat I mean, in general if you look at a gopro right it's saying it's, don't lock it to snapchat i mean no but gopro is like those cameras you know have some heft to it because there's there's camera there's battery storage, storage. So that's a little bit tough. Like to integrate that into a wearable is that's a little bit tricky. Like we, and we've seen some purpose-built like cameras. not necessarily a wearable though. He says oh, if okay. they made like their own like version a Go of a GoPro, yeah. oh. if Snap decided to actually start manufacturing more legitimate camera type products, yeah, he might I be. I feel into like it. they're so Snap is so tied into its stories, its own ecosystem, its own ecosystem that it, it would be tough to see them do it. GoPro has struggled. It's a downfall of every company that came before them. Yeah, AOL. Well, I know uh, Yahoo on and on. I know that in like 2017, like around last May, like Snap acquired like a drone company, which made mm -hmm. me start thinking oh, that they yeah. were trying to do like, Camera you know, drone. selfie drones yeah. kind of stuff. So there you go. Talk about a unitasker. <laughs> Maybe you have to put the glasses on the drone and then it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> that that I'm into. So how are we going to actually get these new Snap? Are they going to do the kiosks again? No, you can order them online. Oh, so they actually made it a pleasant experience. Yes. <laughs> God forbid. Oh, come on. They got so much attention from yeah. doing I mean, those it like, good, silly... It was a good marketing The ploy. attention of being jerks. Yeah. It's true, but you know how the tech world works where exclusivity and also, I feel is like really important. The attention of being jerks, that's like very in line with Snapchat's reputation. Ouch. You think it through. Yeah. And like it's uh, like, uh, you know. Oh. Anyway. All right, let's move on into Facebook. From Imagine Soggy, the impact in Facebook's revenue will be in advertisers not using the platform mm. because of reduced profitability. Excellent point. Uh, will people on Facebook stop clicking on ads is the real question. And as a follow-up, let's see where Facebook revenue is one year from now. Mm -hmm. it's a, that's a fantastic point. Because um, ultimately, Fantastic right, points, yeah. Points, yeah. Because ultimately, yes, yeah, Facebook makes its money from advertising. My The only quibble to that is... Facebook has gotten really, really good at using our data to create really specific ads. Um, and there's very few places that are, I mean, Google's probably the other, the other, the only other option, but there are a few places for advertisers to get that kind of uh, super specific targeting. So I don't know how much it's really going to hurt its bottom line if advertisers don't have other alternatives to go to. So during uh, the testimony, Zuckerberg like mentioned to uh, one of the senators basically, you know, people actually like getting ads that are targeted toward them as yeah, opposed yeah. to like irrelevant ads. And so I've started like since I started like my new Facebook page that I've liked nothing on and like commented well, what on kind nothing. Of ads on, you get? It's so weird. It's like so they they have no profile to target me based off of, and it's just like, hey, um, here's some like Dragon Ball Z thing. And I'm like, I don't know why. Why is this on really? the page? Yeah, it was really weird. I don't get it. I don't know why I'm getting well, that. Don't you like? But you Dragon like Dragon Ball Z? I do, but like, so I, new already. It's not that weird. Hold on, actually, let me, let they me, know it's you just better. Oddly effective. Effective. They know you better than you know yourself. Let me just see. <laughs> let me just see like what what other stuff I'm getting. I'm sandals. 
No, I mean, my I've sandals said it, would be cool. I've said it before. Try oh, to sell dude, me now, something now good. Totally I don't mind being sold stuff that I would like. But, I mean, I remember for a minute there, in the earlier stages of Hulu, I was getting ads for, like, Depends Undergarments. Well, Hulu, I'm like, not and, yet, and guys. definitely early stage of Hulu, they didn't have targeted ads that were that effective. That's yeah. the thing. Facebook's really good at that now. Like, it's usually stuff, the ads that pop up now, stuff that you kind of care about. And the ones because because that you tell them, but the ones that I hate tell them. are that uh, I don't know what the algorithm is, but it just regurgitates stuff that's already in your Amazon shopping list. Like I know, oh I yeah, put it there. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're suggesting that I me. join. Google uh, does that a lot. Uh, Magic the Gathering sick deals. Oh, like, dude, sick deals! Oh, can you send uh, me you that page? Yeah. <laughs> I've into never that. played Magic the Gathering. <laughs> You've never played. So it's basically it. doing like a again, a, maybe a stereotyping you type. Profile. I think they just do like, hey, your friends like this. Maybe you'll like it too. I don't know that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. More questions. Uh, more on Facebook from APEC. Uh, for the people who grew up in the social world type media, I think this one's at you, Alfred. Uh, <laughs> who post everything online and don't care. Do you really think they'll delete their accounts and stop using? Now we've talked about this before. Good point. So yeah, yeah. Have really you seen point. my Instagram? There's like nothing on it, and like my new Facebook page that has nothing on it. Yeah. Um, it's not hard to like delete your account. Like my my thing has always been like you don't have to delete your whole account. Just like start fresh. Like you can add all your old friends again. But like now that you have this knowledge that oh, you know, they are using all my data for this thing. Like, just don't do anything on it except, like, the very minimal thing that you need to do. I've act- On this new profile, I've actually rejected people now. Mm. Where, like, I, I, Thanks, I, dude. I send them a message <laughs> after. <laughs> I was like, hey, look, this is nothing personal, but, like... But you suck. I don't, like, <laughs> I don't need to talk to you, dude. Because I, I know your preferences, and your preferences that are sounds, terrible. That I sounds got, extremely <laughs> personal. I got a, it's, I like, know. the most personal. I got a, personal, I, got, I just I got, don't need you as a friend. I got Facebook. a friend request from a dude that I haven't spoken with since, like, high school, and it was just like, why? That's how Facebook That's works. But it was like, why, man? Like, we haven't well, spoken. Sometimes There's some no... of us welcome <laughs> old friends back into their but lives. Like, yeah. Okay, but, like, I had this fa- the old Facebook page for years, and he never hit me up on that, so I was like, there's literally no maybe point. Maybe it didn't, but it didn't surface for him. Maybe it surfaced now, like the recommendation. Yeah, I mean, maybe he just joined. I don't know. No, no, it's just the be same. friends with him. All What's right, the matter with this? Seems like, like this is more of a personal grudge <laughs> thing now. We've gone from like Facebook best practices to I'm just angry at this. No, guy. the best practices. We should have this guy on the show. <laughs> like have him just walk in. <laughs> My point is, be like, Alfred, what's up? The best practice is just delete your account and then make a new one, so like you can still keep in contact with your friends, but you don't have to like quit cold turkey. Yeah, I guess so. I wouldn't do I mean, that. No, that seems like that's a lot really, of work for yeah, me. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it, it's a lot of work, especially if you know. There, I mean, yeah, I've got like a thousand people in my network. Like, How many of them do you regularly talk to? Like five. Then add, make a new Facebook and only add those five people. That's kind of a. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> you're right about that. So I like Stringjoy's idea to just start going to chaotically weird dark web places or like. Stuff that's avant garde and just, just start really trying to mess throw up the, the algorithmic there curve. Is, um, like, you should see Bridget's. Bridget, with all the research she has to do, uh, takes her out of her you know typical comfort zone a lot. Sure. So her cookies must just be a cesspool, and her Facebook ads <laughs> are all over the place. Like dark hacker. Yeah. 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 So there's actually a Chrome extension that will actually do that for you. Um, it's like it'll take you to the dark net. It's basically like, no. It'll like it's a script that like poisons like your facebook data uh, so that like it's just like a bunch of random stuff that they get um it makes like random posts with like, just a bunch of gibberish so they have no idea how to like target to you hmm. that's another thing you can do then. there you go that seems easier i would like to say that i have successfully severely downsized my facebook interaction over the past three weeks uh, I have posted two things. One was to commemorate the loss of one of my heroes, Carl Kessel, mm. who I met a few years ago. So rest in peace, sir. And then uh, yesterday I met Henry Winkler, so I couldn't help but just Yeah, I saw that. I was so jealous. Barry Zuckercorn. He's very good. Yeah. So <laughs> I couldn't help and but brag. Just another note about the like the you know people that grew up in social media generation that post everything and don't care. Yeah, they're doing it on Snapchat where it deletes itself so it really doesn't matter and mm-hmm. they don't track mm-hmm. it anyway. That's why there, there's no like massive log of it like online. That's I mean, why people I, are flocking well, Instagram stories I would say stories there's too. a younger portion of like the millennial demographic that's on Facebook and posting a bunch of that stuff. Yeah. Because I, Snapchat hasn't been around. If anything, I'm much more concerned about like the younger demographic that's like everyone that wants to be like YouTube stars. Yeah. And yeah. then like that lasts, like then that's there. Like people and they're not gonna right. delete that because yep. it's one of those things like I wanna be a star, so I wanna like yep. I want it out there. Mm. 
All right, in our few remaining minutes, Victor wants us to come back and talk about cash again. And I think this Ooh. is a good thing to talk about because it's one of those things we've seen come in a long time, and it's still kind of a long way off. But he wants yeah. to know how long until we think we are just paying with our phone, smartwatch, etc. Uh, it's going to be a while. I don't I think, think it's ever going to 100% go away. I think, like us, like maybe like 20, 30 years, like the whole world. As a society? Like, yeah, that's never going to happen. Yeah. No, no. I think it'll definitely happen at some point, but it's really far off. Physical cash, like actual, yeah, like that's. It's been predicted for more than twenty years. Yeah, that yeah, the yeah. cash will die. There's obviously, well, from the story that we wrote today, there there are more reasons why there would be a tipping point nowadays. But it's true, especially in the developing world. Yeah, it's much more cash societies than no. Well, you would have actually, in, in the developing world, there there mobile payments, uh, mobile are payment taking off. Are taking off. They are taking off, but it's it's starting at a lower level. Yeah. So that you know, places like but, Kenya, I guess and from China, a, almost from a generational perspective, they they are already way more comfortable with it than we are. That is right? absolutely <clears throat> true. But again, it's it's starting from a lower level than you yeah. would have in the United States yeah. or other developed countries. Yeah. Part of that issue is yeah, there's definitely different technologies like mm -hmm. what they're used to doing we're not doing and the technology they're using is a lot more uh rudimentary versus ours like apple pay and so, yeah. yeah yeah the other thing to really think about too is, is like what does cash do it's kind of like thinking about like a book versus an ebook or a tablet yeah. what does cash actually offer you that the other stuff literally can't do it's there it's physical it's time tested you can buy drugs with it you could buy drugs with it completely anonymously which is a big reason why people would want to keep mean, you using could, cash you could do that with bitcoin you could do that potentially with bitcoin is probably easier yeah but there's like a log of that there's like if they if they know that it's your wallet then like it's pretty obvious that it's you but yeah like also certain things like I mean, what if you in just... a natural disaster most people defer back to cash just like you remember with Hurricane Sandy, people started because the phone networks, a lot of the pho like cell oh, phone yeah, networks were down. down. Yeah. They started using like the actual like uh, phones on the street. Right, pay phones. The pay phones. Thank you. The street phones, phones on the street. Street phones. <laughs> <laughs> now, what if you make the Venmo transaction and in in the note uh, in the subject note you just put not drugs? Does that cover your yeah? That yeah does you that cover your tracks? Legally, Definitely, yes. Dude, some, legally, some, kid at, some kid at Columbia University actually got busted over that. Yep. Like, all like they <laughs> had a whole had drug? no, but like he was a drug dealer at uh, like the campus, and his whole log was like that's like what cops used against him in the case. It's oh, like wow. Venmo log. Yeah, but what, but that was what, really. What were dumb. the comments in the Venmo log? Were they like he marijuana asked, symbols? No, like no, no, fat no. stacks for Mary Jane. I don't know. He asked them to like make a code off of it or whatever but it was like clearly very easy to like bust oh, geez, yeah um i don't know it's, don't do stuff on don't do that on memo basically <laughs> but i mean look uh cash there are some disadvantages to cash right like in terms of moving money around being mm -hmm. able to save money it's really difficult if you don't have like a certain level of income right because like opening a, a savings account at a bank is really tough if you're not making that much money yeah and if, uh you, if you can't get a bank account you can't save money and so have like having access to these kinds of tools, especially as they go digital, you're you know you're able to save manage manage your money, save your money, access more financial tools. Yeah, I like talked to a startup CEO in Barbados. They're uh, developing a whole retail network where you can take the Barbados dollar and turn it digital and access mm -hmm. it from an app, and <clears throat> that just the convenience of being able to do that. I, it was actually really interesting because like it's something that I don't live in my normal life at all, where people have to go directly to the utility company to pay their bills in oh, cash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could just pay the utility bill through the app. That just makes your life that much still, more convenient. People still go to cell phone stores now to pay their bills. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. up until... Weird. Like, yeah. No, it's because they don't have accounts set up, right? Like it's it, There's no electronic transfer because they don't have the income for it, right? Like they uh, so I they see. literally have to go in and pay by cash or pay by check. There are still some merits to paper transactions. Illbeats points out like leaving a tip is mm -hmm. nice to do yeah. in paper because you don't have to claim it on your taxes. Right, right. Or at least most people don't, even though you kind of technically are supposed to. But you're you, supposed to. Yeah, not technically, like, you're supposed to. But there's a whole like you don't. You Gray don't. economy too, where like people get paid under the table. That's mostly in cash. Exactly. Yeah. There are a lot of reasons why cash would continue to be continue to exist. Cryptocurrencies obviously provide certain levels of that with the anonymity, but that's also being challenged by a lot of regulators these days. Datcher's agreeing with what we were talking about yesterday a little bit and the uh, the splintering of the mobile payments and how there should be a, a better established yeah. consistent standard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good luck with that. Oh, no, yeah. That's that's the big issue, right? I think Bridget had a really great video breaking that down, right? Just that mm -hmm. 
individual companies and individual um, parties have their own vested interest in keeping things fragmented. Uh, but that's not good for anyone. Yeah, and using Google Pay on my Samsung S8 isn't that much fun because the fingerprint sensor is in like a really weird place. So oh, yeah, yeah. I have to try it like three different times. Well, I mean... <laughs> it sucks. Boo! <laughs> well, you, so you don't use Samsung Pay because isn't that the one that's more accessible? It works on regular... I'll try it. I'll that's try the it. one that I works got on used to regular using machines. Google Pay. Yeah. Like it doesn't, it doesn't require an NFC terminal. The problem with Android is that like there's five different options I for know. everything. Samsung Pay, Google Pay. This is a, when Android I was Pay. when I was an Apple user, it was just Apple Pay. Now right. you're you're like, well, why don't you try That's Samsung only, Pay? And be like, I don't know. Really, it's only two. I mean, it's only twice. Yeah, a day. try try setting up your messaging services. Oh, they yeah. gave me like 15 yeah. options for messaging services. So. Allo, you should make Allo your primary right. messaging service. That's where all my friends are. <laughs> Yeah, Ill Beats also mentioned it kind of sucks getting stuck behind the stumbling fool present company included that who's was struggling like, yes. to pay with oh mobile payments gosh. in front. But can I just point out, have you ever been stuck behind the grandma with the checkbook at the grocery store? Yeah. Actually yeah. bought the 25 cent pack yes. of gum. <laughs> I do remember uh, Brian Bennett and I, we did this little experiment a couple years ago just sort of testing how the mobile payment experience, uh, experience would be. We like walked around the city, we used it. We couldn't, there were a lot of places we couldn't use it, obviously other places where it worked. But the worst scenario was like, we were in a cab and it was time to pay. And like, it was supposed to take, uh, uh, it wasn't Apple Pay, it was uh, Google Pay at that point. It was Android, Android Pay? pay no, 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 back then it was called Google Pay or whatever. Like, they rebranded it. Mm -hmm. it was, anyways, so the, we had like an HTC phone, we were holding at the sensor and like, we were just keep we kept, kept fiddling around with it because it wouldn't register. Like the, the cabbie was getting pissed at us. We we're stopped at this intersection. We we're just sort of like, ah, uh, and it finally registered. But it took us like five minutes. It was like an excruciatingly wow. long time to like get it to work. So the technology is not ready, is what you're saying? That was, but this was several years ago. Mm. I mean, things have gotten a lot better. Uh, those contactless payment connections uh, do seem to line up a little bit easier now. It's kind of hard to believe but, that that's. But it was already awkward. that long, like it's been around that long, and it yeah. doesn't feel, it feels still fairly new. I yeah. mean, because even though it's been around for several years, it was still kind of a niche thing until Apple brought it to the mainstream. Yeah. It's still niche. It's, it's still, still very it's niche. It's still only but one people person. But are, people are aware of it. Like mm -hmm. before, when Google had it, uh, it just, people, it was around, but people just didn't know or care about it. Okay, so in closing thoughts, uh, one for the road. From Sir Enjoy, what do you think is more likely to happen? Cryptocurrency getting widely mainstream or mainstream currency getting widely electronic? I'm Definitely voting on the, the latter. 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 Good question, though. Very good question. I mean, right. cryptocurrency has a lot of... Oh, sorry. Go <laughs> ahead. We get, no, I'm just saying we got to go. <laughs> we got to go. I'm sorry. You uh, got to go. I, well, I have to go, yes. Yeah. So uh, if you liked anything you saw... Heard here, check us out on CNET. Our podcast is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, and the Amazon Echo. We'll see you all next week. Well, not me, but we'll see these guys next week. All right. Okay, all right. bye. Bye.